Okay, here we go. Okay, attention, attention, attention. Have a look. Okay, let's make this quick. So click and closed. So all we're gonna do today, this will be very quick. This is like no, less, less than ten minutes for sure. So we want to graph systems this time, linear systems, but instead of systems of linear equations, we're gonna look at systems of linear inequalities, right? So let's just, rather than talk too much about it, let's just see what happens when we graph a system of linear inequalities, okay? So let's start off with graphing them one at a time. So if I want to graph the, the top linear equality, this will be our red one. Okay. What's that going to look like in general? If I graph a linear inequality with two variables, x's and y's. Yeah, good. It's a shaded half plane, isn't it? We did these at the start of the year during our review section, right? So it's a there's a boundary line, and then we're going to shade one of the two half planes. The boundary line is going to cut the x y plane into two infinite half planes. You're going to shade one of them, right? Okay. So for this for this line right here, let's first of all let's start off with the boundary line, right? So what's the slope? Of the boundary line. Negative three. Negative three is correct. What's the y-intercept? Negative four. Good. Okay. So we got we got a point. We're starting with the y-intercept. There's one point that's on the boundary line. Then we're going to create a slope triangle. What do we do? What's that slope triangle? You go down triangle. Okay. So we go up by negative three. So down three. And then over one. Rise negative three. Run one, and there's another point, right? Okay, okay. So there's my two points. We graph a line by just creating two points and then connecting and extending. Right. Yes. So we're doing the boundary line. How? Be very specific here. How should I graph my boundary line? Okay. Well, don't, you're, that's true, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. You're already jumping up to the shaded part. I'm, I'm still doing the boundary line. And this is important. Look right here. This is this is a big hint. Dotted or not ah, solid? Okay, it's dashed, isn't it? It's not solid. How come? Because it doesn't include equals. It's only greater than, right? It's not greater than or equal to, and so it's going to be a dashed boundary line. So in other words, thinking back to what we did earlier in the year, the boundary line is not part of the solution. It's just the boundary that defines the solution. Okay, so here's our boundary line. I've got this rare talent. You've seen this many times. I can always hit the zap off. You're about to show us how to draw the line. Your line, right? Your line. Okay, and then now there's our boundary line. Which are we going to shade? Which half plane? Uh, left. What's the universal sign for above? I think, right? Okay. Well, how do you do? So it's because we're doing. We want the y values. Those are the y is the vertical variable, right? We want the y values that are greater than mx plus b. Well, when y is greater, that means above, doesn't it? Right. So we're graphing all of the points up above. I just figured out a new toy today that I didn't even know I had. This is pretty exciting for me. I didn't even realize I could do this, but now I've got I just created everything over there. I didn't know you had that. I didn't even know I had that. How cool is the that? Highlighter? Yeah, the highlighter tool. I didn't even know it was there. <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I never used it once. Yeah, well, but you are by saying that you are. Oh. Okay. Okay, so. This will be our blue line, or our blue half plane, right? So what's the slope there? One third. One third. One third. B equals six. Six, all right. So we got a, an anchor point at y equals six, and we're going to rise by one. one. And we're going to run by three. Oh, not that many. Three, yeah. What? Three. I'm just checking. So pay attention. So there's a second point. Dashed or solid? Solid. Dashed. 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 
shading above or below? Below. Below. Okay, so now I only want the the region that's going to be double shaded here, right? Because now now think what think what the what this solution represented. This was all of the infinite points that sat in the half plane above the red boundary line, right? The blue solution is going to be all of the infinite points that sit in the blue half plane below the boundary line, right? Okay, I'll keep going with that. Over here, though, I'm going to get places where they're both red and blue, right? So those are solutions of the system because they're going to be the places that are shaded by both half planes. This, look how tricky this is. Red and blue makes ink purple. I wonder, like on computer, I wonder if this is multiple to actually an easy question. So on computer, if you're like drawing something and you'll have, when you're drawing something like in red, and then you drop it over it with like blue, do they program it to be purple? Yes. So it's not in that, it's just an ink that you know it's purple. Well, so if you put the blue over the paint, it's going to be blue. Well, Let's try it. So, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, they, they're done in a way where, yes and no. You have to do it both ways. You have to do it both ways, actually. Yeah, it's typically a new program. Yeah. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, because you have, in physics, when you're, when you're dealing with colors, you can do color mixing by addition or subtraction. So, like, when you're mixing pigments, that would be color, that, that would be color mixing by subtraction. And if you're mixing like lights on a wall that are being reflected on a wall, it's different. That's color mixing by addition. You get different results. You get different results when you overlap colors. That you should experiment and try it on your own. Yeah, you can paint it on walls. So if you use all the colors, it make black, right? Because that's so. Okay, if you're if you're <laughs> no, okay, that's, that's a great question. If if you mix all the colors with pigments, so if you're mixing by subtraction, you get black. If you mix all the colors by addition, like you're mixing colored lights together. Well, so so what, so someone, it's on, one of you guys has to remember, put it in your notebook or something, when we have a little extra time, like on a Friday, ask me about color mixing by addition and subtraction, and I'll, I'll explain it in a little more detail. It's kind of fun to know about. Okay? So, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, so then, what about a problem like this one? I want to get you going here. So like this guy right here, right? This is same kind of a problem, only this time the, the equations, the linear equations, or inequalities, I should say, are both written in standard form, right? So, right, so we got to change it. So if we're going to, well, we don't have to. We could use the cover-up trick I showed you, but at the time, we just weren't very good at solving inequalities. Now we're so good at solving inequalities that it's probably just easier to to just isolate y. I mean, it's your choice, but I, I would sort of recommend that. So, and then if you do that, you also can very easily always tell if you're shading above or below because if you put it in slope-intercept form and it's an inequality, if it's y is greater than mx plus b, you're above. If it's y is less than, you're below. It makes it really easy. You don't have to use a test point, right? Okay, so here's our red one. So the red one is starting in this form, in standard form. What are the two steps to get y by itself? Add x. So we get 4y is greater than or equal to negative 12 plus x. Let's make it x minus 12. Now what? Divide both sides by 4. Good. Now, on the right side, if I divide the whole thing by 4, because there's two separate terms, we're just going to split that into two fractions, aren't we? Right? So we'll end up getting something like that. Right? So then what's that look like? I get y is greater than or equal to x over 4. If I write that in the form mx, what's the fraction that's being multiplied by x? 1 fourth. Sure. 1 fourth x. And then negative 12 over 4 is just minus 3. Right? Okay, we'll do. So then we get a y-intercept of what? 
you get a three, okay. And a slope triangle. Solid or dashed? Solid. solid. Finally, if you get a solid one. If, it's, if the line is solid, does that change the shape? No. All it does is it means that the line is a part of the solution. We include the boundary line. Okay, how about this guy here? What are we going to do first? Subtract 7x, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Those guys go away, I get. 4y is less than negative 7x plus 20. Divide by 4. And so we get y is less than negative 7 fourths x plus 5. Good. So in, in neither case did we have to flip the inequality sign. But when would we have to flip the inequality sign when we're isolating? Good. We multiply or divide both sides by negative. We never had to in this case. Okay, so then we end up with a y-intercept of 5, slope of negative 7 fourths. So we're going to rise by negative 7. We're going to run by plus 4. So we get we a point of intersection. What do you know? Dash or solid? Does the point of intersection mean anything, or is it just a coincidence? Uh, it's not a coincidence, but it's also not as meaningful. No. It's, not, it's something that we're going to do. Right. It, is the point of intersection a solution this time? No. No. How come? You're right. Because the one is dashed. Ah, very good, because the one is dashed and the one is solid. Good. So it's not, so nothing on that blue line is actually in the solution set, right? Yeah, that's so good. And then we're shading above or below? <laughs> Below. Below. Okay, so we're shading above the red and below the blue. So let's just go right to the solution set then. I get to play with my new toy again. This is so good. I love this. So we're, I'm just going to, we said below blue and above red, right? So everything kind of just right in there. How about that? They know they're real, right? They made them into real things. Yeah, yeah. They did? Yeah. Okay, so before we go, let's just, I wanted to show you what this looks like in Desmos. Because now you, there's a big note on the assignment too. I didn't give you very many problems to do. I think there's only maybe had like seven problems to do. Not very many. Okay, listen, please. So on the test though, because that's what you're kind of trying to prepare for, right, is the test coming up. You got to be able to do these using technology and not using technology. So the way we just did it was without technology, right? So you got to be able to make the graph and I, you know, on on graph paper, let's say, and match that up with with the choices on Moodle, right? On the the Desmos test, it gets real simple because on Desmos, this is just a piece of cake. Whoops, where there it is. Should we have to enter in the one that we changed? Uh, you you can use the original one they give you on Desmos. Right, there's no reason not to. On Desmos, the nice thing about it is you don't have to isolate y. So that first one's going to be negative 4x. Oh, sorry, negative x. Just checking. Negative x plus 4y. Now, how do I do greater than or equal to on Desmos? Okay, I, I could go down. I could go down to there, to the keypad, and probably find it somewhere on there. Oh, there it is right there, right? Okay, but I don't need to. There's a little shortcut. I can just do greater than and then type in equals, and it gives me greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to negative 12. Okay, there's what we, our first. I already shades it for you. Already shades it for you. Desmos makes it so easy. Then the second one we had 7x plus 4y is less than 20. And so all we got to do in Desmos then is we look for the double shaded region, which is right there. And if you want to know some key points, this is kind of handy. Like if we want to know, for example, there's the point of intersection, there's the y-intercept of the red line, there's the y-intercept of the blue line. That makes it pretty handy, doesn't it? Oops, why'd those go away? That was kind of...
if I do these first. Oh, anyway, that's that makes sense. So there's the double shaded region right there. Yeah, it is. You're right, it is. Let me grab a picture of that though, just so you have one. So something like. Or it even I think it looks better if you just like that, right? Oh, I can Huh, anyway. Okay, you can work. Go ahead and get logged in if you're not already. I'll save these notes to the website so they're there waiting for you.